Let me read to you a passage from the ninth chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 1 to 41. It's the Gospel for the fourth Sunday of Lent, year A. I will only read the beginning of it because it is quite a, a long passage. St. John writes, As he went along, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spat on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed, and he came home seeing. That's the beginning of the Gospel of St. John, chapter 9, verses 1 to 41, for the fourth Sunday of Lent, year A. It suggests to us that Christ is our light, the light of the world. You know, years ago when I was doing missionary work in Peru, I once was coming home on horseback from one of the villages that I had been visiting. Night fell and I had to make the rest of my way back in darkness, on foot, pulling my horse behind me. The ground was rocky and full of bushes impeding my way. There was no moon, no lights anywhere. Finally, in the distance I saw the light of a farm. It was a tremendous blessing to see that light. So small, so far away, but something to head for, because I simply could not see my way. I had no light in the darkness. Let that be a parable. There is an intriguing feature of human knowledge. It is that people can be absolutely certain they are right, precisely when they are in absolute contradiction with one another. A Christian who is quite certain that Jesus Christ is the Son of God is confronted by a Muslim who is quite certain that Jesus Christ is but a prophet and not the greatest of them anyway. Each is certain of his position but at least one of them has to be in error. So it is quite possible to think that one is in the light of truth while being in the darkness of error. Not only is it possible but it is common. Christ described himself as the light of the world, the whole world. Without him then, we are in darkness in respect to what Christ came to offer, which is the knowledge of the triune God and our salvation. As fallen human beings, we shall think that we are in the light. We shall not realize that of ourselves we are to a large extent blind. It is an extraordinary situation we are in because it is so unlike our physical sight. We see things with our eyes and we know when we are in the dark and unable to see at all. Perhaps it is because of the relative reliability of physical sight that we assume that our spiritual sight is similarly dependable. But we can be tragically deceived. Our Lord in today's Gospel passage from John chapter 9 verses 1 to 41 tells us quite plainly that there is only one light for the whole world, one light in those things that concern the way to reach God and attain heaven. Without that light, the whole world is in darkness. Only he is that light. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world, he says. Consider the numerous religions of man. They bear tribute to the grandeur of man. And yet how distant from, from and often in contradictory to what Christ has revealed are many of their teachings. Of course, very many of their teachings contain truth, inasmuch as Christ states that he is the light of the world, and elsewhere that no one can access the Father except through him, 
well this has implications for the religions of man. It is that whatever truth there is in the religions of man that avails to our salvation and eternal destiny with God must come from the Spirit of Christ graciously assisting. Those elements of saving truth, if they are there, are seeds of the Word of God scattered there by the Divine Mercy. However, they are but seeds in comparison with the lush forest of divine truth present in what Christ has entrusted to the Church. We who are baptized have been mercifully blessed with this light of Christ. We have been baptized into His Church and have received the gift of the Holy Spirit and the light of His grace and His teaching. Now it is very easy for us to take all this for granted. We ought try to appreciate the immense treasure that we have, this light and grace of Christ that is able to flood our minds, our hearts and our souls. Let us but think of the great numbers who have not got this light. Thinking of them, we will thank God for the gift of our faith, putting us in union with Christ, the light of the world. But we must resolve to make this light shine and be at work within us. And for this we have the wonderful help of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Blessed Trinity, who has been given to us to guide us, to enlighten us with Christ's teaching, and to inspire us to follow it with all the generosity we can summon. As we look back on our life, let us recognize that we have failed to let this light shine brightly. Let us begin again. We have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us as in a temple. He enlightens our intellect and our conscience as to the meaning and the, and the bearing of Christ's teaching, and he wishes to inspire us to follow it generously. Let us learn to be taught and led by the Holy Spirit, the gift of Christ. Our life must be this, one that is led by the Spirit of Christ. The Holy Spirit is our divine friend, and he dwells within us as within his home. He abides there in order to make a saint of us, if we will but be guided by him. He makes us holy by means of the word of God and the sacraments. But if this is to happen, we must accept Christ as our light. That light of Christ is proclaimed in the scriptures and in the church's preaching and teaching. Guided by this light, let us devoutly receive the sacraments, especially the sacraments of penance and the Eucharist. Aided by the Holy Spirit, let us resolve to be faithful to him who is the light of the world, being ever ready to be led by it.